I had the one or the other talk where I was speaking for two minutes and someone figured out I was speaking so loud that nobody identified that the microphone was not on. Um, I want to talk about exploring the potential for Zephyr in automotive. And uh, maybe I'll go back because for all takes a picture. <laughs> a few words about myself. Uh, I think it's the third presentation I gave during the conference. I had one more on the topic of ETAS, one of, in the field of ELISA. And today I'm speaking as open source enthusiast and promoter because some of the content which I will prevent may be disturbing and uh, is definitely not, or not fully in line with my company because uh, I talk also about AutoZAR, which is very well known as the thing for microcontrollers in automotive. ETAS Proof sells this, so you can a very nice and configurable thingy there, but I talk about that fire. And before, before I talk this, uh, shortly for those which are in the field of space, we have currently a space grade Linux uh, working group starting, and we look for more contents to take in, so even if you're a private space person, you can jump on and take the survey. I saw it's many questions, so I tried to answer it even without being in space, and I couldn't answer all of them. It's 30 or so, but that's just there. And for those filling out the survey and can prove it to me, I have the sticker of the penguin with me as well. But don't do it now. So now, Zephyr Automotive so far. Automotive and Zephyr is nothing new. I have found two evidences, and I mean, we have just 50 minutes, so it's not going into too many details, but I see Cariat being a member and uh, actively also announcing this in social and other parts. Um, Wind River also gave a statement about Zephyr and, and Micro had something on testing in the automotive space, so we have some evidence. If you search for automotive in Zephyr, then you find like 47 results, including this talk. So uh, that's at least two of it. You find also very interesting other parts. So you see the innovation, safety, security. So that's something which is definitely known for that fire. But there's also more which makes like the open source character. So we have meetups and 300 for fun. And I don't know why, but there's also five for beer. No, there was this nice talk at FOSTEM, I guess. Right, so this is the environment in which we are in Zephyr, right? We have very good topics. We, are know, we know that it's good for security parts as well. It's a very nice growing community. We hardly fit the people in the room. So um, this is the one nice, beautiful world. And now you reach the reality of the automotive world of pain. Uh, first of all, what drives me and also others currently in the automotive space and what makes it also a pass potentially for Zephyr is there's a lot of Cortex MR devices around there. They are embedded in SOCs. And uh, traditionally, we had many, many different ECUs. So now it's more centralization. They get new tasks. Responsibilities are taken away. Uh, yeah, software-defined vehicle others drive trends on new use cases, no possibilities. We also see that they are multi-core microcontroller, which haven't been there like 10 years back so much. And this also, sometimes people can like, oh, can I do virtualization on microcontroller? How do I run multiple OS on one microcontroller part? So this was something which is coming up. Uh, we have a bunch of microcontrollers which are ASLD supported. And you know, we also see that there is a path for migrating from microcontroller to microprocessor, which can be interesting as well because Zephyr also runs on microprocessors. Uh, now the other side. What is automotive? Automotive is conservative. And we love standards over everything. So you basically find the standards for every part, most likely even a standard for standards. With the mass volume market, a very price sensitive. So it's really, uh, I know that people look into the bomb and look for where they can save a resistor because this saves then another 0.1 cents on it. But as you sell maybe 10 million devices, suddenly it's already something good. Uh, and therefore, also a lot of standard components are reused already, right? So you can say, well, that, that plays fully in the hand of the FI ecosystem. Uh, really rigorous processes and quality, because typically it was you release a product and then it runs for 10 years in the market without updates and anything. So you fire, release it, and you say, happy go home, you're adult now, work alone. And we have therefore also very long product development life cycles. And uh, yeah, also the long product support, because we need to get product replaced like for 10, 15 years. Actually, we had silicon vendors which wanted to go into automotive and stepped way back in the beginning 
and bought other automotive companies to just understand the business. And due to like CRA updates part, connectivity, and so especially the last part, it's an increasing pain point. And there's also discussion like how do I really update my microcontroller, which is more just connected via CAN stack so far or so. So that's something in there. On Zephyr, the obvious fit, right, is that uh, you bring the strands of mass volume market, so you can really serve this. Price sensitive due to an open source nature. I don't need to train a lot of developers on Notice, our perspective, for example. And there are a lot of reusable standard components. Uh, we see this a little bit later, what's, for example, already there for automotive. Uh, I know there's a pro quality process behind, and there's also certification pass to get a certified version of Zephyr. So that's the other thing around. And where I see potential blockers currently, which make it much harder. So there you need an argument why to use Zephyr is this very conservative where it's still like, do I really want to use open source? These other people which write IP, NDAs, everything is in there. So it's very much even self-driven bare metal parts. Uh, so this is very strong. And also these standards, of course, right? They will say, are you complying to standard X? Then you say, no, we don't. We are a open source community. And, uh, but there's maybe something coming up there. So there are other initiatives working on this open source automotive grade. For example, in the Eclipse software, they find Vico, and there's a fire would fit in with the way how it's developed. So it's maybe a decreasing part. What is the benefit, of course, where you can say, but you know what? Your long product development cycles, you can shrink down, and you have also uh, less possibilities or less efforts in maintaining things. So this could be very attractive factors to just bring things forward. Yeah. So here you come to a much better uh, reuse software argumentation and so on. Right, and I jump over also to Zephyr capabilities in this way, because it's basically what the people come up with. I would tell them, oh, why not using Zephyr? And they say, oh, so what's Zephyr all about? Is it used for automotive? We already know, not yet. So then it's like, what do you need? And then I come up with say, you know, you already get a lot. There's GPIO, Ethernet, SPI, AD converters, you have timer functionalities, you can do your PWMs and all these kind of things. I told this to a guy and he said, well, yeah, this is what everybody can do. I don't need Sapphire for it. But it's important to cover the basics, right? So that's definitely in, and there's many more. The next thing is, which gives a benefit, is the POSIX one. And this was really actually surprising. Uh, when I mentioned POSIX, I hear two times already, oh yeah, POSIX, that's interesting, because it's somehow POSIX automotive cool stuff. Uh, and then the CAN bus is still alive, and it will be alive. Somehow they also managed to have 20 megabits CAN bus connections, but it's a single twisted pair. Uh, so this is something fancy, and we are very conservative, and we are slow, and therefore CAN bus is in there. Uh, then Ethernet is more and more taking over, which is an interesting element, because then you can combine this. And therefore also mentioned this IEEE 1722, which is more for audio video bridging capabilities, because there's also an auto open version of it, and I found first evidence on 1722 available. Uh, if you see there's a braces part, this means I find something which is not directly on the Zephyr documentation part. Direct parts are in Zephyr docs. Uh, AVB is then audio video bridging, generic one also coming from the automotive space. This was done with NXP. And there's this, of course, a safety certification part. So safety will be really something at the end. Well, my consideration was that we have many, many ECUs, and there is like this A, little D, highest level of safety certification, which you get with Autosa, which you get with microcontrollers. But uh, yeah, it's not for every use case. And it's just taken because the only, if you only have a hammer, right, then we'll use this hammer for everything. And so this is where you have most likely Autosa. What I couldn't find uh, was Lin bus implementation. If you don't know what the Limbus, Limbus is, doesn't matter. It's a quite simple protocol, and you could simply implement it, so you wouldn't need a special, specific model. It would be a fast thing to just get it in. FlexRay is also coming up. I never came across FlexRay personally, and I guess my judgment is not too important. I don't know if I missed anything, but this was just from the brainstorming. So if everyone, anyone from the automotive space here says, I miss my favorite interface, then let me know. Uh, with this SDV era in which we are, 
we have new application space. So something like here quite often is like ROS. And there is at least the uh, small parts on micro ROS. TensorFlow Lite comes in. But my personal feeling is we would go into other use cases because these tasks which get in is most likely many things allocate to the microprocessor, other frameworks, and so on. So there may not be the direct need for it, more for streaming something. And then you would not speak TensorFlow or ROS on the microcontroller or let it run on the microprocessor and just stream it via some use cases. Right. Safety part, that's what I said. Uh, interesting enough, in other industries, there's a software of unknown pedigree, which is not heavily used in automotive. We would need to consider where do we go with the whole thing. Um, what is the risk analysis, and so can we make use of it? But there's also currently an ISO pass 8926, which uh, is driven for, we are also by Red Hat, as they try to get with the Linux into the safety critical space. And there the that's why it would also fit in, like with pre-existing parts, you can argue you have a lot of base with requirements and design, so that's a good parse, and is the parse most likely for that way being used in automotive. Now, let's look for the end boss. Autos are classic. This is the thing in automotive, and uh, you can search for a lot of things why you should hate autos are classic, so there's a lot of posts. Uh, there are actually also good things about it, and I don't have the, this is the good thing slide in here, but what you really hear is, well, it's a proven a new thing, and you know if you go and you need a communication stack, it works. So whatever you get with this Autosoft for your microcontroller, with is the, R, the RTOS beneath, or, or the OS specific parts, with certain drivers, this just works. And this is something where you may see, like, if someone tries something out with that fire and something wouldn't work and gives you too many issues with it or running back, then it's something like a throwback. Uh, you could have an argument. Like, if you want to know more, autos are closed source, right? So you don't get the things. Uh, what I learned from my colleagues is, is like, well, before there was autos, so there was OSEC. And OSEC basically describes a lot of requirements which the automotive industry still relies on. And at the same point, he also said, well, everything is tightly coupled together in this. So um, because Autosa was created, started 15 years back, and you know how microcontrollers were looking like 15 years back. So these tools, which partially do code generation based on configurations and so on, they are optimizing in fields of CPU, RAM, uh, ROM parts, where you may not need it anymore but you're still used in these tool chains, which are mainly there. So you not really can use the potential of modern microcontroller with Autosar or fully utilize it. And another problematic field is that actually the requirements, if you are an OEM, you can influence this. If you are a device box manufacturer and you have your own box, then you can also do something. But if you're a supplier in the automotive space, it could happen that you just get requirements which read like autos are. And then you would need to find your way how to translate when they speak autos are language in the requirements description already, how you describe it and transfer it to your Sapphire product. So this is something in there. And the yeah, first point I didn't mention, as architecture is partially generated, you could not even say, here's my application and I just take this application, I look what are the interfaces and I bring this imported two of that fire. So, so this seemed to be very hard due to having even public parts automatically generated and then don't see closed parts and so on. One outperforming element, beside autos are classic, there's also autos are adaptive. Uh, my first thought was why not simply put the autos are adaptive because we have POSIX and we just put it on top of uh, the Sapphire part. And there were multiple arguments why not to do it. So therefore, but I don't do it, and actually Autosar Adaptive is also not selling as they hoped for. I don't see too many implementations yet. Autosar Classic, you know, microcontroller, Autosar Adaptive, more than microprocessor, but for that fair, you could really go in this transition and say, I have something running on a microcontroller, and I have the same Zephyr running on a microprocessor, maybe with certain limitations compared to rituals like Linux, or so it's not meant for this, but it can enable you in this migration of functionality from my microcontroller to microprocessor. That's something really cool. And I'm reaching the end of the time because uh, I started a little bit later than I should. I made a nice use case with Eclipse Cooksar in there, 
where they try to bring some protocol parts in and on the ESP side. Uh, this didn't work. This was quite hard work with gRPC parts, and they saw also some limits on what was possible. Uh, also with the protobuf parts, and we figured out that the open one two one or 1722 part is a more promising part because you can just put things together. So this is something which comes up at the Covisa AMM. Uh, there's a do the example with Zephyr in there. And where you see the classic ECU, which sends can stack parts, you could also imagine that the zone controller is actually a classic ECU running Zephyr and just communicates wires uh, 1722 and send the information which you need. And by this, you would have directly the things from sensor data, actuator parts, and have a pass forward. Summary. Uh, you have a lot of hardware support. We have a lot of hardware support for Zephyr already available. Essential functionality is covered. Not everything which is possible also makes sense. So like you don't need to run suddenly everything on Zephyr, but better thing like what protocols are there which can make use of. Uh, safety will become critical to scale. And please don't try to port Otto's applications to Zephyr. Don't even consider it starting without it. Make it fresh. Thanks.